Welcome to this virtual launch of the Challenging Patriarchy book by HBS, Heinrich Boll Stiftu, and the African Feminist. <laughs> so from now on, I'm just going to be saying HBS. During this one hour, we're going to be, we'll be having an engaging conversation with three amazing women um, who um, edited this book. Uh, Carol. Carol is an African feminist and a human rights lawyer currently working at HBS at the gender, as the Gender Democracy Program Coordinator. Uh, hi, Rosebell. Hi. Rosebell is a Pan-African feminist writer, award-winning blogger, and sociopolitical comment commentator. Uh, she's also the curator and editor of African Feminism, uh, and she has a platform, yes, website. You can also find her on Twitter and Facebook. Um, Mbale, uh, Mbale is an African feminist activist and a writer who is also a graduate of the University of Oxford and the University of Cape Town. And this session, this one hour session will be moderated by me. Uh, I'm Amina, I'm also an African feminist and a writer and a storyteller. So tell me a bit about the book. What was the rationale behind the book? the thoughts about democracy we have feminism we have democracy we have um, you know people working on governance and then there's a lot of conversation about women rights that sometimes you know is does not associate or does not identify as feminism so um, the concept of democracy has been evolving a lot and in some states um we've had it labeled differently we have had people you know uh, some groups speak of post-democracy Democracy actually includes everybody. Is it properly documented? Is it just something that people say on the streets? It's important to put this book together and show how really we are not democratic and how declaring a state self declaring itself democratic does not necessarily mean that um, it adheres to the principles of democracy. Uh, Roosevelt, do you have anything to add to that? We see that everyday African women are contesting and protesting power in the different arena, both private and public. And in many ways, the state is not giving us what we should have, as young, as, especially as a young population uh, on this continent. So capturing those struggles was very important, but also bringing the, these feminist struggles to the center that they're actually shaping the way power is being balanced in, in rearranged on the continent. What kind of contextual background were you thinking about when you when you're editing the book? The contextual background of the book, I think, if you look at the title, um, it's you know challenging um, the, like de democratic rollbacks, and at the forefront, you're also challenging patriarchy. Uh, when you look at all like what the authors wrote um, from each of their contexts, um, kind of spanning through uh, Eritrea, Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, and Ethiopia, and and looking at the unfinished liberation for women in each of these countries, um, I think the, the contextual background in each of these countries or um, the, the, the contextual background that was, um, I would say, uh, necessary to, to write about um, in, in each of these countries is basically look, uh, writing about what is unseen to the public um, and, and writing what what the gaps are between reality and policy and, and really uh, uh, um, like making those who are marginalized or um, kind of exposing stories that aren't exposed uh, about people who are marginalized in each of these countries. So the contextual background of the book for me was quite exciting. Could you give us a bit more about what African feminism is about? Could you tell us? So when we say African feminism, we're still espousing the idea that there's so many diverse ways Africans are fighting, but we are fight, what are we fighting is, is recognition of the history of colonization, of neoliberalism, of patriarchy, that different people experience differently, and the fact that culture, religion, laws, and different institutions are still far away uh, after, after the liberation of countries from colonialism, we are still yet to see fully countries that have given women their rights in various ways, from religion, from culture, from uh, 
accessing opportunities from issues like gender pay gap, but we recognize that this struggle to actually remove this gendered power of man uh, and, and patriarchal power is actually diverse in different contexts. When you Google, just a random Google search on what African feminism is, what pops mostly is the definition of African feminism based on the opposition to Western feminism. Um, feminism it's in itself and also what can be referred to as African feminism is an ideology that challenges the mainstream of patriarchal power, but is not limited to an opposition to Western feminism. I thought it was very important to point out in this conversation. We have to recognize that African feminism is both scholarship and activism. So sometimes people don't tend to, to, to yeah. see the activism side and what they don't realize is that for generations, African women scholars have sat down and put in their labor to label these systems for us. And without labeling something, you can't fight it easily. So you've already told us about the rationale, why the book. So could you tell us what's in the book? There's an array of like, um, I would say, innovative commentary um, on uh, kind of the politics of uh, the politics in Kenya representation within parliament and within counties um, is failing and who are the people who are uh, the gatekeepers. Um, there's also um, another snippet is of uh, the Sudanese context and, and, and that is kind of uh, more, there's a historical overview of it, but also uh, more contemporary uh, look at women's resistance within the Su Sudanese context. Um, there's also uh, women's, um, uh, sexual and reproductive health rights. There's kind of an exploration of other meanings around democracies. I want to ask you, Carol, specifically, um, how did you go about, what kind of process did you go about when you're uh, on this book, the journey to this book? Uh, how did you identify the authors that you wanted to work with? This is literature and this is um, scholarship that is very necessary for our region at the moment. So it would be easy to get, you know, people who are interested from the whole region and that would not have worked by, you know, head hunting or, you know, hand picking. So yeah, we did a call for submission of abstracts. We got a lot of abstracts. And now we set through, you know, identifying what suited this particular book the most, what relates or what was most relevant to the theme, sexual reproductive health, uh, representation, when you talk about propaganda, when you talk about peace and war, you know, in some countries and how some things are related. And um, that was the whole process of how we got to where we are and how we got to the authors and the topics that we have currently. I, I, I want to just take back a bit on Caro's um, input on, on, the, on the process. The fact that many of the writers were building already on what was already established, but kind of giving us new insights in these issues. Um, giving us a different lens that with, with the changing times was very important, but also redefining what we think is democracy. Yeah, so thank you, Roosevelt, for that. Um, so back to my question. I want to know what excited you guys. And I think what excited me most, um, looking at the, 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 the paper exploring Eritrea, also the paper looking at Ethiopia, um, the Ethiopian Empire and, and, and looking at, you know, Mirga, finding a new kind of language to yeah. speak about women's rights. A lot of the time we don't look at um, like uh, dem uh, demographics. So, so looking at actual numbers. So how does the makeup of a household drastically change the roles or shift the roles within a household. And, uh, and a lot of the authors, I mean, there's the style of writing is just, it, 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 was, it was like, like reading um, a, like a new generation that, that's wanting to write histories yeah. of resistance. The writing style was not boring at all. I actually agree with you. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was fascinating to, to read how like an article and not feel bored by the new information that you're, you're, you're receiving about your African culture. I have to say um, the most exciting thing for me was the manner in which the articles brought out their diversity 
and at the same time, the similarity of the struggles in the region. For me, the struggle as, as a journalist, as a communicator, having been on the forefront of fighting for justice, we tend to forget that how deeply the control of women's bodies has an impact, but we cannot, whether we give women the right to vote, whether we grant women the right to drive, if women cannot control the very basic thing, their body, how actually litigation works, how who makes the laws, who makes the decisions in your parliament, who is the religious leader, who is the culture leader. And, and this whole, it digs back into like how colonialism in itself affected how women could, in Africa, could make the rights on their own bodies. Who is this book for? Um, the book is basically for anybody and everyone who wants and is working towards a better future, better system, better world. It basically speaks to almost everybody in their different capacities. So yes, the book is for everyone. Sometimes we lack the documentation, even when we are present, uh, to document the struggles in real time, to continue documenting those struggles is very important. It's for me, for many African, not just African feminism, but African um, people to document the struggles against the various systems. Where can I get the book? The HBS website and African Feminism website immediately after this conversation. That is the ebook. We should have had copies by end of next week. Uh, they will be available at the HBS office. At the moment, uh, what distribution channel will be from the HBS office, but um, watch out for our web, for, watch out for our social media handle. We'll be able to, you know, point out, point people to different directions. If they're in different countries or if, yeah, in different countries and they want the book, we'll be able to point them to our distribution channels in those countries. We need to do our question and answer. Um, so one of the questions I've just received, I wonder if this book can be used for literature, management, politics, advocacy of human rights. If so, I would be happy to listen to what the authors have to say. When we were developing the book, we made sure that uh, every author properly referenced and properly uh, followed basic rules of academia so that the book is available in academia circles and also available for advocacy and human rights and CSOs and also available as individual personal reads. The authors are from different backgrounds and, and, and there are 12 authors, they are all from the Eastern Horn of African region, but it doesn't mean that people only wrote about the situations they, they have lived in or not. And uh, it's a mixture of different authors. And we hope to, to have a conversation with them at some point. Asking, is it possible to touch on the, some of the African feminist ideologies that are covered in the book? So we have a whole paper on actually on, actually on motherism um, mm. in Africa, but situated in Ethiopia also. So yeah, so I think that we, we touched a lot on the theories on African feminist the theories that, that, that are thrown in the, in, the, in the book. The same person is asking, is it, under, is it under a Creative Commons license if we want to use the book for teaching a course? Yes, it is in the Creative Commons license. And um, the first, I think the second page after the cover, has clearly stipulated the licenses. I think I would just give you just a few, like a minute each, just to say a last word before we close. My last word, <laughs> please read the book. <laughs> that is my last word. Um, I'm really happy that the book is free because often, you know, we write for different people and they get to own the material we have. I understand the need to pay writers, but it's also important to create platforms that can pay writers, but at the same time, get their knowledge to be shared. What my takeaway from the book is that it's, it's, it's a compilation of histories that we are creating. Um, and, and it, you know, you can read from beginning to end and you, you will take away such rich knowledge about um, the Horn in East Africa. So I'd like to say thank you for everyone who's worked together on this book. Um, and, and the last words, I, I don't even need to say anything else. I just read from what someone, one of the contributors, Nerima Were, um, she says, this book is for all women, all Africans, all feminists, all persons suffering under patriarchy, capitalism, and neoliberalism, all those in the struggle to decolonize this continent, dismantle the systems of oppression, and recreate this content.
So my last word is read the book. <laughs>